This is what the prophet said to her in 2 Kings 4, verse 3. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Somebody say, Even empty vessels. Borrow it, not a few. Somebody say, Some empty vessels. Some vessels that have been vacated for this purpose. That are prepared through emptiness for this fullness. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Some empty vessels. You know, heaven never runs out of oil. <laughs> the problem is not the oil. The problem is God can't find some vessels. It's empty enough. You know, the greatest hindrance to the next move of God is being satisfied with the previous move of God. Some people have got a patent on God's presence, or they think they do. They've camped around last year's experience. Come on, somebody, they've memorialized the last move. And often that's what hinders the next move. The greatest enemy of God's next move is the enemy I refer to as enough. Being merely satisfied with what you have seen God do. Thinking this as far as I need to go in God. And there's many like that way and they become stagnant in the kingdom of God because God cannot do no more unless he can find some empty vessels. Look at your neighbors say, last Wednesday was great. Tell them say, last Sunday was awesome. Tell them say, this morning was awesome. But somebody shout, exit those experiences. Unless those experiences, come on somebody, cause you not to enter into the next thing that God's wanting to do. You know what a religious spirit is? A religious spirit to preserve where God's been, but will try to fight what He wants to do. Amen. God said, I had to bring you here to continue into what I wanted you to do. Hallelujah. Because where God had been, had been preserved. But God said where I was moving, they didn't want to move, so I had to bring you here. Oh, somebody lift your hands. Say, Lord, help me stay empty. you got to learn to daily empty yourself. Empty yourself. Because there's more. Somebody say there's more. And in verses 4, the Bible said, When thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out in all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So the prophet's instructions were, shut the door, get along you and your sons, take the little jar, the little vessel of oil that you've got left, begin to pour it out into the empty vessels that you've gathered and set aside that which is full. Verses 5, so when, or so she went from him, shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. Somebody say she shut the door and she poured out. And she poured out. Somebody say she shut the door. She shut the door. And she experienced a pour out. Not a war out, but a pour out. Not a give out, but a pour out. Somebody shout. That's the key to the next pour out. You got to learn to shut the door. Mm. Matthew 6 verse 6 says But thou when thou prayest enter into thy closet When you have shut your door Pray to your father which is in secret And your father which seeth in secret Shall reward you openly Somebody yeah. say private prayer produces public power yeah. Somebody say you've got to learn to shut your door If you want the fresh oil of heaven Come on your fellowship must be fresh You may have talked with him yesterday But come this morning Come on church You need to talk to him the Bible said in Exodus chapter 20 and verses 19, a man Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. In Genesis 1 verses 2 said that the Holy Ghost moved on the faces of the water. Somebody shout in the dark. Somebody shout he loves the dark. He loves the night shift. I'm telling you what, in the a.m. hours of darkness, God still moves. Somebody shout in the morning before daylight comes. There's a move of God. You need to embrace it. Come on church. And you need to get somewhere and shut the door. You need to shut the door to the world. You need to shut the door to your life. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And open heaven's door in a secret place. I'm afraid the modern church has been hidden the private. She's been hidden the secret place. Glory to God like the woman with the issue of blood in Luke chapter 8. She had an issue in the secret place. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. She had a blood flow. But when she touched the hem of his garment, when she pressed into where he was, her issues got settled. Come on, church. I'm telling you, the devil's hit the modern church in the private place. Because the Bible said in Psalms 91 verses 1 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. The devil 
don't care if you can come to church and sing and shout and dance and turn Holy Ghost cartwheels if you want to. Uh, praise God and skip and jump and dance. Uh, amen. And wrong die, Honda tie my bow tie. No offense, brother. I like your bow tie. Praise the Lord God. It don't matter. Amen. That don't scare the devil none. Uh, praise God. But if you ever, uh, amen, get into a closet, somehow say a place where you close it, uh, you close out the world. Uh, and that don't just mean a closet. Uh, but my friend, since we're talking about a closet, uh, Psalm, or Isaiah 61, verse 3, said there's a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Uh, I'm telling you in a closet of prayer where you close the door and you leave your iPhone outside. Come on, somebody. Uh, and you leave your laptop outside. Uh, and you leave everything outside. Uh, it ain't no bottom but you and King Jesus. Uh, there's a garment of praise uh, hanging up in this closet of the prayer. Uh, and you'll walk out full of the joy of God uh, and the power of God. Uh, hallelujah. Spirits of depression uh, won't be on you. And the only pill you'll have to swallow is a gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Come on. Amen. 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 Oh, glory. Oh, boy. Whatever. Praise God. Thank you, Receiver. Somebody say, shut the door. It was behind closed doors. Somebody say, behind closed doors. But the risen Christ walked through the wall. In John 20, verse 19. Into an upper room where the disciples were sitting in gloom, thinking we're going to die. Somebody shout, if you'll get behind closed doors and call on Jesus. He'll come to where you are and he won't even need nobody to open the door and let him in. Amen. Somebody say behind closed doors. In Exodus 33 verses 9, Moses entered into the tabernacle of God and he began to talk with God and God stood in the door and they talked face to face, verse 11, as a man with his friend. You know what happened when that happened? Y'all want to know what happened when that happened? What happened? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. This was a holy happening. God stood in the door. I saw that one day and I said, man, God blocked the door. <laughs> you ever had God block the door? Yes. Holy Ghost told me years ago, he said, I'll block every door even I open if you neglect me the door. Come on. John 10 and 9, Jesus said, I am the door. Amen. He said, if you get so caught up doing ministry that you forget what the ministry really is. He said, I'll block, close every door until you figure out the door you really need to get behind. Come on. Come on. Which is me. You get so busy, you ain't got time for the Lord of the work. Come on, somebody. But you're so busy doing a work for the Lord, God said, I'll block the door. I'll be the one that hinders. I'll be the one that stops. I've had him do that to me before, and thank God. Amen. I've had God block the door, and I said, Lord, what's the problem? He said, you are. Come on. Come on. You somehow think you can do this without me now. Hello, you have you thought that now you can operate out of remembrance instead of fresh revelation? Come on, church. Hallelujah. You know, preachers do it all the time. If you preach long enough, you can just come up here and you can preach. Hello? Hello? Come on, man. Praise God. He said, I will block the door if you neglect me the door. God stood in the door. I had God stand in the door many times. I'll be about to leave my prayer time. And I've heard him block the door and say, don't leave. Whew. Don't leave yet. I ain't through. Amen. Let me tell you, practice never makes perfect. Prayer does. Amen. I didn't plan what I just did on the drums. Neither did I practice Hallelujah. But I spent time with him before. Amen. The sun arose this morning. The day star arose in my heart. Somebody shout, I was anointed to do it. Amen. Amen. A year ago, last Sunday, praise the Lord God, I was in early morning prayer. On a Saturday morning, on May the 24th, 2014. And in prayer that morning before daylight, man, I had me some kind of time with the Holy Ghost. Hey, sometimes I'll be walking the floor in the morning. Hey, Amen. I ain't felt a thing. Come on, somebody. And somewhere about 545, 545. So like I had a shot, a man of a double shot caffeine. Glory to God, tall glass of coffee. I straight son, Holy Ghost done showed up. And then they sometimes ain't felt nothing within that hour of prayer. I just did it by faith. And this was one of them mornings. It was right before it got through with the hour of prayer. Man, I felt the Holy Ghost come down and I began to sing that old song to church. When I see the blood, oh, when I see the blood, oh, when I see the blood, I pass, I will pass over you. Some of you don't even know what I'm singing about. 
It's in that red back in the room. When I see the blood. Man, that old church song come up in my spirit. Pastor and I began to sing about the blood. Man, I felt the Holy Ghost. It's where the blood's applied, the Holy Ghost abides. Somebody yeah. shout, you start talking about the blood of his cross, he will show up. Because the blood's applied and then the oil comes next. That's Leviticus 14, ain't got time to preach that. But listen, hey amen, when I began to sing about the blood and felt the presence of God, I had no idea. Amen. Glory to God that hours later, almost at 9 p.m. that at night, I get a call to find that my 17-year-old son at the time would be laying in a ditch after he had been thrown 50 feet from a golf cart, after a man had rammed him going 55, 65 mile an hour, amen, hit his boat from behind, amen, devoured it and the golf cart, throwing my son, and he's a large frame boy, hallelujah, he's taller than me, he's about 6'2", weighs about 250, big boy, hallelujah, and threw him from that golf cart wrapped his back around a metal sign that was concreted in the ground and laid him upside the ditch, knocking him unconscious. When I got to the scene, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. As I left my house after God the news, amen, I run out of my house, got in my truck, glory to God, Duke boys didn't have nothing on me coming out of my driveway that night. Hallelujah, glory to God. Amen, NASCAR didn't have nothing on me, son. Hallelujah, I come out of that driveway sideways, praise God, with the, amen, metal to the pedal, or the pedal to the metal, however you do it first. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. But I was going and I started speaking in the Holy Ghost. I started praying with other tongues. All of a sudden I heard that old song come up in my spirit. When I see the blood. Man, I begin to sing that and speak in tongues and laugh and sing it some more. And when I got there and I stepped out on that asphalt highway and a graveyard on one side and my son laying in the ditch on one side and lights from rescue vehicles everywhere, people all in the ditch. Hallelujah. When I stepped out in my camouflage shorts and, hey, you know, you know when sometimes when trouble comes, you ain't got time to go put on your suit. Praise God. You ain't got no time to go suit up in the Holy Ghost either. You better already been suited up. I stepped out in the flip-flops, glory to God, walking across that asphalt. Hallelujah. When I stepped out, I stepped out in a piece from another world. I began to pray in the Holy Ghost and scripture started coming to me. When I walked down in that ditch, I can't explain it. It was same man faith from another world. I moved people away from him. Hallelujah. And I took charge of the scene in the Holy Ghost. In the scriptures like you hear me preach tonight. I started spilling out of my spirit. As I began to lay hands on my son. Hallelujah. And quote the word of God. I was told later on people hit their knees in the ditch. Praise the Lord God. I don't know how to explain it. Except it was by the Holy Ghost. There was no fear in me. I knew it was all done. And I knew no death angel would touch my child that night because the blood had been applied that morning. Then it's my they put my son in the ambulance and I'm getting in my car the Holy Ghost said pull out your cell phone and keep praying and record the following of the ambulance. And I did and it went all over the internet. Some, some of you may have even seen it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But that was the ongoing of what I was doing in the ditch when I was following that ambulance to the hospital. Two days later he walked out after being lifelighted to Savannah. Glory to God. A walking living miracle. in the night like that. Well, let me tell you, it weren't that daddy could pray in the night like that. Daddy mastered the morning in prayer. If you master the morning in prayer, when night times come, when dark times come, God said, I'll give you power from another world. Folk can look at you and say, I don't know how can you handle it. Because you mastered the morning in prayer. You can't afford not to see him in the morning. I'm going to find leading the bed that morning. It's what I had that night I got in the morning time. I didn't get it that night. I got it in the morning. Oh, glory. Someone say, shut your door. Shut your door. And pour out the oil. Pour out the oil. Somebody shout, that's still how the Holy Ghost comes. Hey, somebody, you've been having trouble in your forearm, all down in your arm, even into your, your wrist and the hand. I don't know what that is, but the Holy Ghost said if you'll stretch it forth right now in this room. It's, it's in your forearm, into your hand. Hallelujah. That's it. Stretch it, Brother Cameraman. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God, I thank you as he does your work in the kingdom tonight. So many thousands can watch this in the future. God, I thank you that his arm is being healed in the name of Jesus. Anybody else? 
Stretch that hand. Glory to God. God, I thank you for healing these arms just like the man with the withered hand stretched forth his hand in the synagogue. And Jesus, hallelujah, said be straight and it was straight. It is done now. God, I thank you for making that straight. I thank you for healing that and correcting that in the mighty name of Jesus himself. Took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, Matthew 8 and 17. And if you're watching, if you've got any problems with your hands, in your wrist or in your uh, knuckles, any of that, and all up into your elbow and even into your shoulder. There's people in here with, with problems with your shoulder. Some of you, you can't even lift your arm like this. I command you by the word of the Lord. Lift up your arm now in Jesus' name. The P, the power of God, hallelujah, is taking the pain. The Holy Ghost is limbering that up right now. God, I thank you for all from heaven. Hallelujah. I proceed. People's got faith in this room to be healed. And I thank you, God, that they're being healed right now. Go from their shoulder now in the name of Jesus. Who in here has been having urinary problems? Stand up and come here. Something to do with your urinary tracts. It's about going to the restroom. Something. Obey God and come here. Come here now. Hurry. Now. you got to do it now. You better come on. Come on. You've been, it's, to do with the, it's to do with the urinary part, part of your body. Come on. Obey God. I don't know all the details and we don't have to. But the Holy Ghost is about to do a miracle for you, sir. Is it all right to let the Holy Ghost interrupt and intervene when he gets ready? Give me a couple of brothers. Come here. God, I thank you that this man ain't going to be. He was healed 2,000 years ago. And God, whatever is hindering him, whatever is doing this, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I command that to loose him now and let him go in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. By a strap, she were healed. First Peter two twenty four. We call things that are not as though they were. Romans four seventeen. God, I thank you. Every symptom is relieved. In the mighty name of Jesus, to God be the glory in the church. Said Amen. 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 If he said it, he'll do it. If he spake it, he'll make it good. Amen. Numbers 23, 19. Somebody praise his word. Psalms 56 and 10 said, God will I praise his 